boom. Don't be afraid. Invest. Take that chance. Take that opportunity. What's going on guys, it's here Eddie. In this video, I am going to talk about finance on how to have the financial literacy, the financial knowledge on how to manage your income, your cash. Also, the main point as to why the rich get richer versus the middle and poor class are always struggling. This is what this video is about. And I'm gonna be showing you step by step through a financial book written by Mr. Robert Kiyosaki. So you can have the financial knowledge, the financial literacy you need to become rich and wealthy just like the rich let's jump right into it this is the book rich dad poor dad on everything you need to know on how to manage your income your cash and i'm gonna guide you step by step on what to do to become just like other rich people in the world on what they do to rise up rich and wealthy. This financial book to show you everything you need to know on how to manage your income, your cash, so you can become rich and wealthy also to have a better lifestyle. Not only you, but also your loved ones, your family. I'm going to show you first through this financial book, what it's called, this is the cash flow pattern of an asset. I also have my notes written down so I can know what pages to go to. I'm going to go to page number 60 on cash flow pattern of an asset. This is what it says. This is the cash flow pattern of an asset. Okay, this is the cash flow pattern of an asset. And this is what you need to do. Right on the other side, right here, this is the cash flow pattern of a liability. What's an asset and what is a liability? An asset puts cash in your pockets. A liability takes money out of your pockets. So you need to have your asset box full and your liabilities nothing. But sometimes because we are trying to rise up financially, of course, if we don't have the cash, we need to buy such as a car. That's a liability because that's a need. So yes, we can have that as a liability, but we need to keep it real small. Keep the liabilities real small. <laughs> the assets, huge. <laughs> so, assets, huge. Liabilities, real small. Regarding jobs, this is the drawing regarding the job. Job and expenses. We all have expenses. This is the cash flow pattern of a person in the middle 
class. This drawing right here. This is what the middle class do. As you can see, the liabilities of mortgage, consumer loans, credit cards. Now, regarding a liability right on a mortgage, of course, we need to have a house to live in. Of course, we're going to have that as a liability because we need a place to live. This is only showing us what a liability is, a mortgage. What is a mortgage? A loan, a payment towards a house. So we have to pay that loan out to the bank. So do we need to have this liability, a mortgage? Yes, we do, because we need a house to live in. If we don't have the cash to pay for a house, then of course we're gonna have to have this as a liability. We need a house to live in. But this is only explaining what a liability is. A house, it's a liability because it's taking cash out of our pockets. Until it's paid off, then it's a different story. Unless the house and have it rented out, then that would be an asset because it's putting cash right in our pocket. Then that would be an asset. Consumer loans. That's also a liability because it's taking money out of our pockets if we have loans, credit cards, our liabilities. If we have credit cards and we spend money, we have to make payments until we pay those credit cards off this is the cash flow pattern of a wealthy person. This is what the wealthy people or rich people do. This is the drawing, the pattern. Now, what is it that they do? Income, dividends, interest, rental income, royalties, an asset, stocks, bonds, notes, real estate, intellectual property. Now, regarding income, what is dividends? A dividend, it's a stock that a person can buy that pays dividends every three months. I'm gonna give you an example. Coca-Cola, Chevron, Exxon. Those are, even though oil is a commodity, but they pay dividends every three months. This is when the corporation sells their products and after they pay all the expenses, everything they owe, then the profit that is left after they pay all the expenses from the corporation, then what the corporation does, the profit that they have left, they put it aside and that's what they use to pay all the investors that own dividend stocks. So this is what a dividend is. An example, let's say you have 500,000 shares of Coca-Cola. Every three months, you will get a payout of, let's say, 50 cents per share. So you can multiply 500,000 shares. I'm gonna give you an example. If you have 500,000 shares of Coca-Cola, the corporation is paying 50 cents per share that you own, this means you have to multiply 500,000 times 0.50, and that is the amount that you're gonna get every three months for owning this dividend stocks. Now, 
does the person have to sell the stocks? The answer is no. That is why many investors invest in dividend stocks because they get paid or we get paid. You can have little or a lot. Other people that have dividend stocks, they get paid every three months. It depends on the corporation though. It can be every month, every three months, but it's usually every three months. And why would you wanna sell a property that is paying you cash every three months? This is a way to make a lot of income through dividend stocks. And you're not only owning a stock, you're owning a business, a part of that business when you own stocks from a corporation. If you buy dividend stocks, keep them long term because it will generate you income. It's generating us income. This is what a dividend stock does. This is what a lot of the rich people invest in, dividend stocks. And that is 100% good. I recommend. <laughs> Interest. Rental income. Rental income is from properties such as if you rent a house, you, may, you get income from that. Or let's say you own a commercial real estate property. But a com when you own a real estate commercial building that has a lot of space, a lot of offices, then you can rent this space to entrepreneurs, to business people, and you can make a lot of high income cash. Because commercial real estate buildings rents are real high. They can be from $2,000 even higher every month. So you can just imagine how much money or how much cash you will be making with that commercial real estate building. A lot of cash. Royalties. A royalty is when you, a royalty is for example, if you write a book and it sells, then all of a sudden you get so much money, but then the book continues to sell, then they will give you a percentage because the book continues to sell. And that is why you call royalties and it depends if the book is good people like it people continue to buy it to be recommended if the store sells all the books and continues to sell all the books but then it continues to sell more books for every book that is sold then the company will pay the owner of that book royalties and that's extra income which is good. <laughs> this is what the rich and wealthy people do. This is what this graph is about. Okay, I'm gonna show you what's a liability. Rich that the liability is a house. Poor that the asset is a house. I'm gonna show you the drawing on that and also the liability drawing.
liabilities. The expenses, as it says, mortgage, property taxes, insurance, maintenance, utilities. Not a liability if it's paid off. Now regarding educated dot financial statement and rich dot financials statement. Page 74 and 75. This is the educated dad's financial statement. In the other page, it's rich dad's financial statement. So I'm gonna show you that educated dad's financial statement. And right on the other page, it's the rich dad's financial statement. As you can see, what is the difference is that the educated dad's financial statement the box of liabilities is big while the rich dad's financial statement assets it's big That is the difference. What it says on the book, Rich Dad's personal financial statement, on the other hand, reflects the results of a life dedicated to investing and minimizing liabilities. And why minimizing liabilities? Because liabilities take cash out of your pockets. And what do you wanna do? You wanna put cash in your pocket. <laughs> Page 76. The results being the rich get richer. I'm going to show you the drawing pattern of what the rich do. Why the rich get richer. And this is the reason why the rich get richer. As you can see, the drawing and the line circle. What do they do? Income, expenses, and assets and you can see the box of the assets the arrow going up which means fill it up with assets that will generate a lot of income. On the other page, it says, why the middle class struggle? This is the reason why the middle class struggle. Because they have a lot of liabilities. As you can see, the arrow going up. Now I'm going to go to page 98. What page 98 is about is how the rich play the game. And I'm going to show you that. 
here's the financial pattern of how the rich play the game. <laughs> As you can see right there, that's what the rich people and wealthy people do. So what is it that they do? As you have seen, they diminish taxable income, then the expenses, the taxes, a personal corporation, so they go from income to assets. So that's what they do. Income, assets. They buy a lot of assets, which equals to properties that generate income. That's what they do. Now, another thing is, for instance, I'm gonna give you an example. When the stock market or the market in whole, worldwide, all of a sudden drops, negative rent numbers. A lot of the people in the world, what they do, a lot of investors, a lot of people, what a lot of people do is they take advantage of this opportunity to invest. They face fear to take the opportunity to invest. Because prices are real low. Once they have taken advantage of this opportunity, once that happens, then they're going to start making a lot of cash. Through stocks, through real estate, through commercial real estate. A lot of investors and all of a sudden the stock market falls. What happens? Low numbers, opportunity to face the market, to face fear and invest at low prices. The more they buy, the richer they get. They own a lot of corporations through stocks, through dividend stocks. Every three months, they generate income from those companies that they have bought. You don't have to be rich to buy. If you have $1,000, you can invest at low prices. Find the best corporations that pay dividends that you're interested in and just hold. That's what you have to do. Always be prepared with cash. Once the opportunity comes, then take advantage. That's what you have to do. Boom, boom.
take that chance, take that opportunity, start buying. That's how you will become rich and wealthy. Also, you can do the same thing with real estate. Find the opportunities and invest. Same thing with commercial real estate. Find the opportunities, good prices, Boom, boom, take the shot. Don't be afraid, invest. And you can always negotiate the prices to be cut down. If you get it at a lower price, you will get a better deal. That would be a better investment. This is how it's done. It doesn't matter if you're rich or not. What matters is have the cash and when the opportunities come or if you see an opportunity, go for it. Boom, boom, take action. That's what we need to do. That's what you need to do. Take action. This is what the rich people do. This is how they play the game. They see opportunities, low prices, boom, boom. They take that chance because they have the financial literacy, the financial knowledge. They don't fear the market. They face the market. They go boom, boom. And invest. That's how they get rich. The more properties they own, the richer they get. And what do a lot of people do? They cry about it. They get away from the market. They fear the market. Wrong. Where is the boom? Boom. When you invest, when you take that chance, when you start investing with those opportunities, one of the things that happened was with the virus. Everything went down. Basically, all the prices went low. The stock market was negative. Negative rent numbers. A lot of the investors took that opportunity to invest. Not only investors, traders, stock market traders.
all the people that knew that this was the opportunity to invest. And they took advantage of it and they became richer. If they were not rich, a lot of them became rich. So this is the game of the rich. And it can be anybody's game when you have the financial literacy and the financial knowledge. Take action. Invest. When there's opportunities, don't let them go. This is the right brain side or the creative side, which is investing. Understanding markets. The science of supply and demand. There is a need to know chance, aspects of the market, which is emotion driven, the tickle me Elmo doll. During Christmas 1996 is a case of a technical or emotion driven market. Other market factor is the fundamental or the economic sins of an investment. Does an investment make sense or it does not make sense based on the current market conditions? Many people think the concepts of investing and understanding the market are too complex for kids. They fail to see that kids know these subjects intuitively. For those not familiar with the Elmo doll, it was a Sesame Street character that was highly touted To the kids just before Christmas. Many parents wonder if the company intentionally held the product off the market while continuing to advertise it for Christmas. A panic set in due to high demand and lack of supply. Having no dolls to buy in the stores Scalpers saw an opportunity to make a small fortune from desperate parents. The unlucky parents who did not find a doll were forced to buy another toy for Christmas. 
the incredible popularity of the Tickle Me Elmo doll made no sense to me, but it all serves as an excellent example of supply and demand economics. The same thing goes on in the stock, bond, real estate, and baseball card markets. So this is an explanation of how the stock market works. Supply and demand. When the markets fall, negative red numbers. This is the opportunity to buy. What I just talked about, markets and investing. But when the stock market is low. when numbers are low. When you buy high, there is risk. When you buy low, real low, you have less risk. And it's also a great opportunity because when the stock market starts to rise up, that is when people, the people who invested, starts to make money. The stock market works the same way as the market in real estate, commercial real estate. Everybody wants to buy at low prices because we can buy more, less risky. The more we buy, when these opportunities come, the better. <laughs> so that is how a lot of the people that are rich become richer and wealthier. That is how the game is played, 100%. So take those opportunities to invest. When opportunities come, Boom, boom, take the shot. Don't be afraid. Invest. It's best for your future and your family. Now, right on page 55 on chapter 3 from this financial book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, it will teach you why 
teach financial literacy. Why it's so important. You should know why it's important because who does not want to have to be finance? Who does not want to have financial freedom, financial knowledge, and live a good lifestyle? Everyone. Who does not want to have a house paid off? Who does not want to own properties to rent? Who does not want to be rich and wealthy, to have a good lifestyle, to travel around the world? I mean, this is why it is important to know how to invest. This is what this financial book, Rich Dad and Poor Dad, is about. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment box below and I'll do my best to answer you back. If you enjoyed this video and saw value, make sure to smash, smash, smash that like and subscribe button. Make sure to share the video. Make sure to give it a like. Thank you for watching. This is Eddie. See you in the next video. <laughs>